So um, why don't you just talk about your journey to med school, like all the way from school and, uh, and what happened there and then kind of the steps that took you to where you are and um, uh, yeah, and all the attempts. Yeah, definitely. So it's a long journey and it started back in secondary school. And it was actually in year seven during a parents evening when my science teacher was, you know, praising me in front of my parents saying she got a level seven. That's, you know, that's what we're aiming for the year 11 to get. And, you know, your child's getting this in year seven. It's great. You know, just keep going and you'll be able to apply to um, university for degrees like medicine, dentistry, the really top competitive ones. So I always had that goal in, in mind so throughout year seven to year 11 it was always about you know pushing myself to get the best I could at the same time trying to you know see what I wanted to do and throughout those years I would go to the doctors quite often and although I was the patient I would always be observing sort of what their job was and in a way I was you know sort of admiring what they were doing so it was there that I had that sort of spark and then from then on uh, I went to sit my GCSE so I chose triple science and I worked really hard and I came out with really good grades and um, I thought that would continue to a, a level but a level was a big jump and things didn't go quite as planned so I decided to not apply for medicine and instead go for biomedical science because I knew a lot of didn't you say that one of your teachers advised you against it? Um, yeah, so they said, well, your predicted grades won't be enough for an application because at that time, universities really wanted straight A's or even A stars that were introduced around that time. B's when you know, they were out of a question, even though now some unis do accept people with B's at the time it was, it wasn't enough. So um, I decided to just go for biomedical science and I applied for that course. Um, I got in and then I went on to do biomed at the University of Greenwich. Hmm. And then how many times did you actually apply to medical school then? So I didn't apply during my A-levels. I applied in third year of, bi of my biomed degree. It was a sort of a trial run. I just just wanted to see how that application went and I thought if I get in great if not you know it's not the end of the world that year was quite intense so I wasn't able to put in a hundred percent in my UCAT or application because I had my dissertation and my exams um, so I applied then I didn't get in I didn't get interviews either so then I thought okay that's fine I then got a job in a lab so I spent a year out working in the lab. Um, I sat the UCAT and I wasn't happy with it, so I didn't apply. That was, looking back now, that was a mistake because my UCAT was decent and I, if I had applied at the time to an undergrad course, it would have been enough for an interview. But at this time, I was still going for the graduate entry medicine courses because they were um, funded for you. Um, so I sat the UCAT, but did, decided to not put an application through. Um, I then applied during my MSc. Again, I didn't get an um, interview offer. Um, I then applied after my master's. And at that time, I wasn't working. So I had all this time to just focus on my UCAT, my application, and put all the effort into that. And third time lucky. Mm. So what do you think made the difference this time around? I think what made a difference is I had, I didn't have a lot going on. So I had more time to just focus on medicine applications and not try and juggle too many things at the same time. Because previously I was trying to juggle a dissertation or a full-time job and it, it just wasn't manageable. Um, this time I also decided to apply strategically and that means uh, previously I was putting down the top London um, graduate entry courses and looking back that was 
maybe not the smartest idea considering my UCAT was quite average and those unis normally want people in the really top decile UCAT scoring to even offer them an interview and this time after speaking to a friend who told me you know you do know student finance do give you maintenance loan even if it's your second degree they won't give you tuition but they will give you maintenance and that changed things slightly for me it meant that i was in the financial position to then put a undergrad course and this was the first year that i put a few down and so i got an offer yeah nice. it was a smart choice mm, great so yeah so um being smart about it um so what would you say if you if you were to speak to anyone now who's maybe had one or two failed attempts at getting into medical school, what would you say to them and what would your advice be? My advice would be to keep going. I know how those rejections feel. They literally feel like, you know, nothing's working. Um, literally you feel like the world is ending. Why isn't you know it happening? Especially when you're working so hard to get where you want to be. So it can be quite demotivating. I would say allow yourself time to feel like that, but make sure you pick yourself up and keep going. Because if it's something that you really want to do, you'll go for it and you'll keep trying and trying until you're there. And um, I would say after each rejection, reflect and reevaluate and see what you can change for next time you apply. So was it because you didn't have enough work experience or was it your UCAT? How about trying a different entrance exam? You know, just to sort of reflect to see where you could have possibly gone wrong. Mm. Do you think, would you argue that if anyone worked hard enough and focused on all the areas that they need, do you think this, it's applicable to anybody? Or do you think there are certain people that still shouldn't apply? Or do you think anybody could do it if they worked hard enough? I feel like if it's something that they really wanted to do, for a long time and they've put the work in and um, they don't see themselves doing anything else then yeah I think it's applicable to them as well because um, with med school it's not until I came here but med school also helps you develop your interpersonal skills as well so if there's something that you're not that great in and you're thinking mm, you know would I be good enough for med school you know they teach you all these things anyway i think you i think you need to have a good intentions for wanting to do medicine because it's long especially as a graduate it's even longer um it's really stressful you've got five years worth of exams so you really really want you know need to want to do it yeah so if there's somebody sitting here thinking like oh maybe i don't have the grades or whatever what, what do you think is the one key attribute that someone needs if, it's go, if they're going to be successful with applying to medical school and a career in medicine? Um, it's interesting you say grades, because with grades, um, a lot of students look at their grades and think, oh, you know, these aren't good enough for medical school. Um, I'm never going to get in or be a good doctor and all of that. But I mean, a lot of students don't get the A-levels that they want. And a lot of them go on to do in different degrees. So in my case, a biomedical science degree. And in my case, I worked so hard during that degree because I wanted to prove to myself that, you know, I'm not, those grades don't define me. And in a lot of cases with people that don't get the grades they want, those grades don't define them. Mm. Yeah, I think, yeah, well, there's that saying, isn't there, that really, it's only ever a failure if you want it to be because you know there's always that thing there's no such thing as failures but you just learn lessons and it, it's only when you stop really and you really do give up that then it, it can be classed as a failure because I suppose it's the same for you Mindy. you'd probably say that all those previous attempts were just kind of building up to you finally getting to where you are now yeah definitely <laughs> I imagine myself when I was 17 back in sixth form and I don't feel like I had the maturity to do medicine at that time. Like I see the 18 year olds in my course and their, their work ethic is so strong that a lot of them are really mature. And I'm just like, I wasn't like that when I was 17. 
So I, I feel like everything happens for a reason. During, during my biomed degree, I didn't just go on to do that degree, but I went to do on so many different jobs as well. I got so much experience, worked in different sectors in the hospital as well. So I really got to have a realistic insight of the job before I applied. Because now I know that I 100% want to do medicine. Because I've seen, I've seen it in real life. I've worked in the hospital. I've seen what everyone else does in that team. Yeah, in a way, it's kind of like all that was just the training and the proving that you need to yourself to kind of get you ready for medical school, right? <laughs> um, yeah. I think it's also true <clears throat> with grades as well. Even grades, I think, like you say, you can, if you can, sometimes you might have to go about it the long way around. Like you might have to get yourself into a degree and then um, work hard there to kind of get a high enough degree to then be able to get into medicine that way. Or like even when people feel they don't have the grades, if they have the ability to get a tutor, sometimes that is all the difference that it makes just to help them understand enough to get those grades. You kind of like any aspect of the application, whether it's your work experience, the extracurricular activities, your, your grades, um, and you know, even the attributes that you need, these are all things that you can develop. And if you focus on them individually, and you know, work really hard on your grades. Like I say, if you need to get a tutor, do all those things. Over time, you'll eventually build all the aspects of the application that you need to succeed. And for some people, that might be done, you know, in their last year of sick form, and and it might come quite easy for them. And they're very lucky if it does. And then other people, it takes a, a bit more work. And you know, it's just about being patient if you really want it and you really will try hard at it firstly i'd say i'd argue that you're a lot more deserving of it because you know i'd be interested to see how many people who got in first time would have applied a second time if they didn't hmm. yeah no it's really interesting i say to actually a lot of people that um you know are trying to get in and they're still not getting those offers yet i just tell them if it's something you really want to do you know, you won't give up. And I always say it's a matter of when, not if. Because I was always convincing myself, I will get in, I will get in eventually. I don't know when, but I know with this um, perseverance that I will. And I didn't stop. Mm. There were many times I would say to myself, this is the last time I'm going to apply and then I'm giving up. But I noticed I would say that all the time when I would apply. So... God knows how many more times I would have applied if I wasn't successful this year. Yeah. And um, there's a really good athlete who I know, I can't think of, um, sorry, there's a, there's a really good athletic quote. I can't remember who it's by, sorry. And it's like, it goes something like, um, it's not how good you are, it's how bad you want it. And that's such a true kind of reflect. This is such a good illustration of that, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay, great. So that, yeah, I think that's um, covered the kind of like multi keep going until, you know, if at first you don't succeed sort of thing. So you were saying that you've had some quite um, out of the ordinary work experience type exposure that, you, that you've had compared to the average person. You said you've got some good ideas as to what people can do and kind of quirky and alternative ways in which people can get the exposure needed to help them get into med school. So what were those, Mim? Um, I would say the top one is a medical interpreter. Now, a lot of people might say, well, I can speak a language, for example, their mother tongue, but I don't know how to speak it that well. And that was my sort of fear in the beginning when I heard about that job role. I said, well, I can speak my language, but I'm not that great at it. Um, I then went to the interview and the boss said, well, you don't need to be able to speak it perfectly as long as you know how to communicate well. And I said, yeah, I do know how to communicate well. Um, and then I went to do my first shift. So it was a um, zero hour contract and they called you whenever they needed you. For example, they had a patient that couldn't speak English and they asked me to go. And it was really interesting. It was quite tense because um, I had to break some bad news to the patient about um, her child. And although the doctor was given the bad news, 
essentially it felt like I was giving the bad news because she didn't understand the doctor. She was understanding what I was saying. And I thought that was a really tense situation, but I learned a lot from that. So I would definitely see it, say, check into medical interpreters. Not everyone has that, so it looks quite unique on an application form. Mm, other jobs include um, teacher's assistant, for example, with special needs. That's quite a good one. A NHS coordinator, that's more admin, but still you learn so much about the different systems and um, the admin part of a hospital, which is really important. And for example, I needed to book in a patient for a um, sort of urgent inpatient procedure and I had to phone the bed manager and try and secure a bed for that patient and I just thought well that's really I didn't know that I would be in the position to have to like organize someone a bed for them for when they need it after their surgery so I thought it was quite gave me a really good insight into the sort of policies within a hospital. Yeah and that's definitely the kind of thing the junior doctor has to do not maybe necessarily organize a bed but like you know, organise the referral, make sure that they've got their scans, do all this sort of stuff. And <clears throat> yeah, it's absolutely key skills that, yeah, exactly. People wouldn't think of becoming a coordinator. And especially like you say, when you're a bit, when you're not 16 or 17, maybe when you're 18 and above and you can um, have these jobs and you have kind of the maturity to take on such a responsibility and you're trying to find something that sets you apart to get in if you're applying a bit later on. Yeah, it's a really amazing bit of experience because I always say like when so the, for people who are struggling with work experience at the moment, you know, we have alternative ways of getting getting the same thing. Well, not exactly the same thing, but as close to the, the, the real thing as you would get in hospital. So that's like, you know, the Brighton and Sussex Medical School virtual work experience or even apparently MedicMind do a very good one um, and the Northwest London Trust. And then you've got observed GP and things like that. But sometimes it helps to just take a step back and go, well, actually, what is work experience trying to help you achieve? It's helping you get exposure to the NHS, see the upsides, the downsides, and all the realities of being a doctor. Like I say, developing some of the skills that, um, that a doctor needs to have, like you, you said about communication and like trying to organize things for people. And then you said with caring and teaching um this you know children with learning difficulties that is you know communication caring for people all the stuff that you get on your volunteering so i think sometimes it's a case of step, taking a step back and actually looking at what are the skills that i need to gain from work experience and what are some of the alternative ways that i can achieve those Definitely. I would also advise for people that are in sixth form to get involved with um, roles within their school, such as being a peer mentor or being part of a um, leadership role, such as a prefect or a head of house. Because although those aren't linked to NHS, as you said earlier, they show what skills you have. And essentially, med schools are trying to, they don't want to really know what you did. They want to know what you learned from it and what skills you've got so i always say you can show communication skills for example whether you're working as a healthcare assistant in a hospital or whether you're working in mcdonald's um, and i'm pretty sure that um, med schools now know especially with the covid situation that it's even harder for students to get work experience so what you mentioned earlier the brighton and sussex virtual work experience i had to look at that and i thought that was really good so i would advise them just get involved with roles in school um, with opportunities online and even if they've got a part-time weekend job that they think it's not related to healthcare it doesn't matter put that in your personal statement mm. yeah fantastic 